Hello my loves and welcome back to another yoga class. Today's class is all about the calves and the ankles. So if like me you have tight calves or you have any ankle mobility issues then this is the class for you. Let's begin by lying back on our mat. Just take a few breaths to settle into the space and just bring yourself present here into your practice. And take a moment to just notice. Notice the calves and where they connect to the floor. Is there more contact at the back of the calves, the outer edge? And how is that connection to the floor different on the right compared to the left? Taking that information then and storing it away, let's begin by having the knees bent and placing the feet onto the floor. So feel where the sole of the foot connects to the floor, feel the heels and the ball of the foot connected to the floor. On your next inhale, keep the heels connected but lift the ball of the foot and the toes away. As you exhale, push the ball of the foot down and then lift the heels away. And just continue this movement here, rolling through the sole of the foot. And as you do a few more, perhaps start to notice as you inhale and the ball of the foot pushes down, can you arch the back away from the floor? And as you exhale, push the ball of the foot down, lift the heels and push the lower back into the floor. It's kind of like um, rubbing your belly and patting your head here, but if you're moving your back and your ankles and your feet, then we're good. <laughs> Just notice if one calf or one ankle moves differently to the other. Is there any tightness on one side compared to the other? Next time then that the ball of the foot pushes down into the floor, let that be the last one. And then rest with the sole of the foot connected to the floor. Separate the feet a little bit wider here and let the knees sway from side to side, letting them move from right to left. As you fall into center next time, take a pause. Bring the feet back in. Draw the knees into the chest. Take a little rock and roll here. And then roll to one side. Push yourself up and come up and over onto the hands and the knees. So you might want to have a little bit of cushion underneath the knees. So either a cushion, a folded blanket, whatever you need. Spread the fingers nice and wide and just take a little bit of cat and cow. As you inhale, the navel will descend. Exhale, pull the navel to the spine, tuck in the chin, look back towards the feet.
Mm. As you move through neutral next time, take a pause. Take the right leg and send it back behind you and have the ball of the foot connect to the floor behind you. The toes tucked under here. Have the heel pointing directly towards the back of your mat. And then just push the heel towards the back of the mat, rocking the torso back and then come forward. Just rocking a little bit back and forth. Kind of reaching that limit of the calf stretch here and then releasing. If you have issues on the hands and the wrists, you can take the hands a little further forward or you can come up onto fists and do the exercise on fists here. Whatever works for your wrists and your shoulders. Next time that you send the weight back, you lengthen through the calf, just pause there, take a few breaths here. Release, drop the knee to the floor and then sit the hips back. Just take child's pose, maybe the head rests on the floor. Rise back up to all fours. Settle back into a neutral position here. And then send the left leg back behind you. Drop the ball of the foot to the floor. And again, take the rock. Draw the heel towards the back of your mat and then send the head towards the front. Just working through the ankle, lengthening and releasing through the calf. Just take a moment here to notice if one calf feels a little tighter than the other. Does one hand, ankle perhaps have more range of motion? How different does this side feel? As you send the heel back, this time take a pause. Breathing into it. Releasing back and then dropping the knee back down to the floor. And before we come into child's pose this time, I want you to explore a variation of child's pose with the toes tucked under and the ball of the foot connected to the floor. And from here, sit back into child's pose. You may need to support a little bit with the arms if that feels a little bit uncomfortable for you, depending on your calves and your bottom of your foot here, your plantar. Maybe the head connects to the floor. Maybe the arms can rest. If it does feel at all kind of really, really tight in the calves or the plantar on the bottom of the foot, then release the foot and just sit into child's pose. Finding your variation here. One more breath. Reaching the arms forward. 
come back up to the hands and the knees. Tuck the toes if they're not already. Draw the navel to the spine and lift the hips up. Take downward facing dog. So as we find our down dog here, then just take a little pedal through the feet. One knee bends, one leg lengthens. So one heel at a time is working towards the floor. And doing this kind of alternating action gives us an opportunity again here to just notice, does one leg feel differently to another? And you may already be aware of which side feels a little tighter, which has a little more tension. So just give yourself that opportunity to notice. Settle into down dog, take a breath. Notice how close the heels connect to the floor. They don't have to connect, but just notice. Bend the knees, walk the feet up towards the hands. And take forward fold here. Maybe the hands have to rest on a block. Maybe the hands rest on the shins, whatever feels right for you. Just take in a couple of breaths here. Letting the head and the shoulders relax. Soften the knees, rise up to standing. Take a breath. Okay, if you have the blanket or something on your mat, then put that to one side. And I want you to think about um, your balance here. If you know that your balance is a little bit suspect, then use a wall or a chair for support. And I'm gonna show you the variation with a chair because sometimes it's just nice to have a little bit of support. So bring yourself a chair or something for support in front. It can be a wall, it can be the back of a sofa. Step the right leg back behind you. As you step it back, it doesn't have to be a huge step. But what I would like is for the feet to be on train tracks, not on a balance beam, which is why you have the chair for a little bit of support and stability if you need it. If you think about those train tracks then, Think about the back right foot pointing straight forward rather than the toes pointing out to the side. Lift the heel and send the heel to the back of your mat. Bend your left knee, use the wall or the chair for support until you find some length in that right calf. And just pause there, just take a few breaths and notice how it feels. Does the calf Kind of feel a little bit tight here. Does the heel fully connect to the floor? And if it doesn't, maybe think about stepping the right foot in a little bit here or supporting the heel. So you take a few more breaths, just notice that right side. From here, lift the right heel and then send the right foot just a couple of little steps in here. And as you send it in here, I want you to bend the right knee. And the right knee will come down towards the floor. So make sure that it's not collapsing inwards, you're just bringing it down towards the floor. And that will hopefully send that stretch more into the soleus, the bottom part of your calf. And I like using some support here for my upper body because then I'm not thinking about wobbling or falling over. I'm just thinking about length here. Notice again where you're feeling it in that right calf, towards the bottom of the calf. Is it towards the outer edge, the inner edge? What's happening for you in your body?
release here by lengthening through both legs and then any amount hinge forward now if you can hinge forward and the hands can come to the chair or if you can hinge forward and the hands can come to the blocks or the floor, then great. And again, I want you to think about this back right foot. Can you still have the toes pointing forward rather than the toes pointing out to the sides? Taking pyramid here. Great pose for lengthening through the calves, mobilizing through the ankles. Soften the knees, unfold, rise back up. And then let's switch sides. So take the right foot in and then take the left foot back. Again, thinking about the left heel lifting and going towards the back of your mat. Draw that right knee forward, taking warrior one-ish here. Maybe the hands connect to the wall or a chair, whatever you need here. Notice, how does this left calf feel compared to the right calf? Which one is tighter for you? Lift that left heel and just step the left foot in. A couple of little baby steps. And as you do that, the right knee will stay bent. You're still on those uh, train tracks here, but bend that left knee. And dropping the knee towards the floor here, not inwards towards the right leg, but towards the floor. And as you take that, notice how that changes the sensation of length in that left calf. Take that opportunity to compare. How does this soleus compare to the right? Which one was tighter for you? Lengthen the legs. And from the hips, hinge forward. Maybe the hands rest on your chair, seat of your chair, or can you walk yourself down towards the floor? Support on blocks if you need to. And just notice in pyramid here, how does this side feel compared to the previous side? Soften the knees, unfold, rise back up. Step that left foot in, and then come back down onto your back with your knees bent and your feet on the floor.
So from here, draw the right knee into the chest. Take the right foot across the left knee. The right knee will open away. Maybe the arms rest out by the sides, wherever feels comfortable for you. And any amount, I want you to rotate this little figure four over to the left side so that the right foot kind of travels along to the left. The right knee will still be a little bit lifted up here. Just taking a few breaths. A little bit of a twist. Rise back up. Uncross the legs. And then recross with the left foot up and over the right knee, the left knee opening away. And then any amount, let the hips roll to the right side. The foot does not have to connect to the floor. Whatever you have available is fine. Let the legs roll back into center. Uncross the legs. Bring both feet back down to the floor. And as you find the feet connected again to the floor here, then just think about that movement that we had at the beginning. We lifted the balls of the feet away from the floor and then pushed the ball of the foot down and lifted the heels. And just take again that little bit of pattern of movement. And just inquire as to whether it feels any different now compared to the beginning of your practice. And on your next exhale, I want you to pull the knees into the chest. Just take a little rock and roll. Let the feet reconnect to the floor. And then lengthen the legs. Find same position that you began your practice and just take a moment a moment to notice the connection of the calves to the floor notice if it feels any different to the connection that you had at the beginning And then just allow yourself a little time to rest and breathe.
deepen your breath. Start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. And in your body move and stretch. And drawing the knees to the chest. Roll to one side. Take a couple of breaths here. And you use your top hand to push yourself up and away. Come into that comfortable seated position. Resting here with the spine aligned and the eyes closed. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Deep inhale. Exhale. One more big deep inhale. And a loud exhale. Resting here, body, mind, heart and breath, balanced as one. Namaste.